Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my home in Livingston, Montana. Okay, I'm going to try to get through this video just as expeditiously as I, as I can, but if I get a little long-winded, please forgive me. Okay, whatever here. Okay, this is a sit-down, unboxing, first impression of a shotgun that I just bought today. And today, by the way, is March 5th of 2020. But this is the guy right here. It's a Caltech KS7 shotgun. And why do I even entertain something like this for self-defense? It's just that it's just that simple. Now, right off the get-go, I'm gonna make a statement. I've not I haven't even shot this thing. I've done a lot of research on this Caltech KS7, and but I am definitely not on no Caltech bandwagon or dancing around the campfire or anything like this until I've got a chance to take this out somewhere and shoot it. But today, I just first brought it home. It's very windy outside. I'm not going to shoot it today. Okay, uh, what else was I going to say here? Oh yeah, I'm not much of a tactical guy. On the internet, I keep hearing that word tactical. As a Vietnam War a veteran, you know what that does? You know, you know, you know what tactical means to me? Absolutely nothing except for a bunch of BS and nonsense. Let's ask, let's ask Siri what's the meaning on my iPhone here. Let's ask Siri what the meaning, let me make sure this thing is turned up, what the meaning of tactical is, okay? Siri, what is the meaning of the word tactical? Tactical means relating to or constituting actions carefully planned to gain a specific military end. Thank you very much, Siri. Goodbye. You're welcome. Okay, did you catch that? I just thought I'd bring somebody like Siri into my discussion here. I am not a, I'm a Vietnam veteran, but I think that people get way too carried away with this tactical business. Okay, I just, I'm not, I've got my reasons. I could sit here for a half an hour on that, but that's not what this is all about. I just thought I'd start this video off with a little jocularity, you know what I mean? I do not like the word tactical. Okay, anyway, here, the reason why I got started on these short defense shotguns is I acquired this TAC-14, this Remington 870 TAC-14 on a trade to a friend of mine, which I've got YouTube videos on. You know, I traded a Benelli Tactical for this sawed-off little thing right here. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I like this. I like Remington 870s. I've owned several of them in my day. And since I've done a video, since the time that I've done any videos on this, I come along and put a strap right here, and I've also put a strap right here. You can get these on Amazon, by the way, and I'm not going to explain all this, you know, how to do it, where to get them, and what the names is. That's not the point. The reason why I did this, I put these straps here on this forearm and right in here like this, because this bugger kicks like a mill, and it's kind of hard to hang on to, and it's dang near impossible to, to uh, aim. You can't bring, you cannot. With any degree of safety, bring this piece up to your face too awful close because you, you run into the deal of this of this receiver, this barrel, mat, permanent you know putting a permanent scar on your forehead. You know, and so the last couple two or three months, I've been kind of shopping around. I've been looking at a lot of videos, you know, about you know defensive shot, twelve gauge shotgun ammunition. Uh, you know, some of the different tactical shotguns out there and whatnot have you. So, this Caltech KS7, that's, that, that's Kilo Sierra 7, it, it was not a compulsive buy for me. In fact, the FBI put a five day hold on me, and that even gave me more time to do the, you know, research, which I did a lot of research. But I bought that piece right there for one, this is what I'm going to be showing you here. Because, well, for, for several reasons, but I'll get into it. But the main thing that I'm setting up for is grizzly bear protection. It's as simple as that. 
But the problem with this piece right here, it's a great piece and everything. You just have a little, to me, it's like just pointing this thing because you got to keep it out here like this. I, for a defensive type, grizzly bear type shotgun, I didn't like that idea because in a, in a grizzly bear charge, in a grizzly bear attack, you, you're, you got to be able to get rounds down range in a quick hurry. Why? Because those big, those snarling, overgrown pigs with fur and teeth and all this other stuff can, can move. I mean, these things can run 30 to 35 miles an hour, and you've only got just seconds to deploy a firearm or pepper spray or whatever. So, that's the reason why I did the purchase for the Caltech. Let me show you that. Let me put this back in its scabbard. I haven't even went out and shot this since I put those put those uh, straps on the handle and forearm. But hopefully that will keep some of that buck down because this thing, this thing, this this Remington Tac 14, 870 Tac 14 is kind of hard to hang on to. Okay. Now let me, before I grab that shotgun back there, I'm going to be breaking this in for the next couple days using these right here. And no, I don't work for this company. I don't even know who they are. I bought this shotgun over in Bozeman, Montana from an outfit called Bob Wards and Sons. They're a local sporting goods vendor. They are, they're a Montana-based sporting goods vendor. And they've been in business for like, I don't know, something like 40 or 50 years here in Montana. They've got like six or seven stores scattered throughout the state or whatever have you. If you want to know what I gave for this shotgun, $475 out the door. That's with my veteran's discount. But anyway, I do have three cards of these that I picked up today along with my shotgun. You know, I've got six of these snap caps, you know, these practicing snap caps. So, they're just for practice. You guys know how they work. Okay. Here is the Caltech. Comes in a weird box like this right here. You know. And yeah, I can't see much here. I did a two minute video as I was coming back from Bozeman today. So that should be on my YouTube channel. But if I get. Okay listen. If I get some of the figures wrong on this piece, just go to keltechweapons.com and check it all out for yourself, okay? But I just thought I'd show you this weird box, a little short cardboard box. These pieces sitting in here, just like so, you know, but I'll, I'll take it out of here because I know there's like a little safe piece of plastic, a safety plastic or something, you know, this, whatever this is for. And there's an owner's manual right there. And that's really all there is to it. Yeah. I made him I made him go fetch the box for me, you know. I just it was up on their gun racks, but I wanted the box, so. But anyway, here is this piece. Right off the get-go, this thing is this weapon, if you will, is gun. I don't like the Back in the military in my day, we didn't call stuff like this guns. They're either a weapon, your piece, your girlfriend, or whatever have you. But this guy is 26 and 1.1 inches long. And believe it or not, empty. This, i.e. shotgun, because this is a shotgun. It's not an other or an alternative or whatever have you. But it weighs 5.2. 5. 5.9 pounds. It is very light. Empty. And of course it holds seven rounds of three inch. And it holds eight rounds of two and three quarter inch 12 gauge. And I got some pretty heavy stuff that I'm going to be running through here. Because like I say, I bought this mostly for grizzly bear protection. Now for you folks that like it, fine. For you folks that don't understand where I'm coming from, I don't care. You don't live up here in Montana with these hairy pigs that want to tear you apart. But anyway, yeah, this this guy right here made in the United States. I don't know what else I could tell you about his pistol grip. It's got a uh, it's got an optic sight up front there. I doubt I'm going to change any of this stuff. 
simply because I like the idea of this of this carrying handle right here. It reminds me of the old M16s that we had in Vietnam. And uh, there's a few things I am going to do to this, so I'll just tell you that right off the get-go. I am going to put a slip-on recoil pad, and I do believe I'm going to put on a muzzle brake, brake right there. There's several of them on the market, you know, but I haven't got to that yet. I don't believe in making these firearms tactical if it's not absolutely necessary. Like if you're in the military or even when I was in Vietnam, I'm telling you guys, we, we back in my day, we used to improvise. There wasn't nothing tactical about anything. That, and I handled the 16, the M60 when I was over there and all that other stuff. So this business of people going out and hanging a bunch of decorations on a firearm just because it looks tactical is a bunch of nonsense. Okay, I'm glad I got that off my chest. Okay, anyway, to rock this thing back, you know, it's right in here. You know, it's got the, there's right, it's ambidextrous, you know, for this slide right here. You just pull that back and, you know, she racks up pretty good there, near as I can figure. I, I should have some snap caps in here, but I decide not to mess with that. Of course, the rounds, they eject out of, out of here, and you load them here. You know, now, Caltech has got, as most of you guys out there know, they got the KSG, which is a double, ma it, it's got two magazines in here, uh, you know, and one magazine gets empty, one tube gets empty, you switch it over to the other. I had my hands on one of them. I inspected one of those too heavy from what I'm, you know, when you, when you, I've said this before on my channel, like if you go hiking up in these Absorky Mountains where I live, look at here, this is the way it is. Ounces turn into pounds the higher you go, and pounds turn into tons. And that's the last thing that I want to be doing is packing around a real heavy firearm. And this, this met my criteria. That's why I bought it. It's as simple as that. You may agree with what I'm doing. You may not agree with what I'm doing. I doesn't make any difference to me. Yeah, and eventually I may end up, you know, putting some grip tape on here. I don't know. Uh, the shell follower... Yeah, you probably can't see it, but back in here you can get a more, okay, you see that white, let me see if I can get this, <laughs> all right, there, that white, that white magazine plug right there, you can get a, you can get ones that slide in and out a little bit better, that's just made out of plastic, but you can get an aluminum upgrade or a stainless steel or whatever have you, that's a jobber that rides on the magazine spring that pushes on the shells, you know, anyway, so, a lot, there's a lot of polymer in this thing. That Caltech is a USA company, and they're lower. It says right here on this stock back here that in Cocoa, Florida, this will handle up to three inch shells. Only holds seven of them, like I say. And I really don't know what else to, you know. I probably should. I really can't sit here and say, okay, I don't like this. I don't like that. I'm gonna. You know, I'm going to hang all the jewelry off of this thing that I possibly can because I know that's not what I'm going to do because i got to go out and shoot this before I can really start any kind of Caltech dance or war hoop or, or you know, whatever. You know what I mean? Or jump on a Caltech bandwagon because right now I'm 68 years old. I've owned quite a few firearms in my day. Uh, you, well, not that big compared to some people I see. But Caltech is a brand new company to me, but most of the YouTube videos I watch and everything, they're, you know, what they're doing is pretty favorable, you know, with their, what is it, their competition pistol 33 and God knows what else they got, you know. A lot of Paul Muir in this and this barrel, okay, the barrel itself right in here, the barrel actually extends way back in here, and that's why they, it's an 18 and a half inch barrel, and that's why they can cram all this in, in 26.1 inches long. Now, like I say, it weighs 8.9 pounds, and the rest of it you can read for yourself, but you know, 
what is the deal with this guy? Do I think it's a good shot again? Well, I'm hoping so. I know if you have, the way Caltech works, if you have the original receipt, they've got a lifetime warranty on these, which is one other thing that sold me. But you got to have your original seat. you got to be the original owner and have the receipt, which I've got mine tucked away in my pocket. But, you know, if nothing else, this is show and tell time. I don't think anybody's really learning anything. But I do have some number two bird shot, some three inchers three, ready to go. And I've got some federal three inch, what is it, one and eighth inch hollow point slugs that I'm going to get all lined up and test and stuff into the future. But this is just a set down first impression type of a thing. And of course, I'd look, I looked this over real well in the store you know, five, six days ago, waiting for my FFL to clear, which it did. Like I say, I got this for eight, four seventy-five. Excuse me, strike the eight. I just said four hundred and seventy-five dollars out the door. So there you go with my veterans discount. I don't know what else to tell you. You know, I'm going to do a few things with it, but I know one thing: I'm not putting any. Real expensive red dots or optics up here because I want to be able to get quick target acquisition with this guy. Let me put this right up here so you can see that. I really do like that that optic sight there because you can get target acquisition very acquisition very very quickly. You know so, and I know but the reason why I've been a kind of a barking about this tactical stuff. Is because I got to looking out on the open market and there is, huh, man, there is dozens and dozens and dozens of, of things that you could actually add on this little short tactical, if you will, defense shotgun. You know, I've estimated that you could, you know, counting laser sights, flashlights, muzzle brakes, uh, barrel extensions, magazines extension, blah, 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 blah. You you could you could probably put somewhere between seven hundred and a thousand dollars worth of upgrades, you know, which I find to be ridiculous because you could buy another the firearm for that. What kind of nonsense is this? That anyway, I plan on the upgrades I plan on doing to this. Hey, maybe maybe two hundred bucks worth. A few little things I'm going to do. So, no, that's all there is to it. This is no D green, as you guys could probably well see. And, and somewhere, you know, down the pike, if I have bad luck, if this thing kicks out, if it doesn't cycle right or fire right or jars my dentures out of my head or, or malfunctions in any way, well, more than likely I'll probably make a YouTube video on that. But I know one thing, this piece is going right back to Caltech and getting fixed. So... Would I recommend this? Here it is. It depends on what you need a, a shotgun like this for. I know precisely what I need this shotgun for. I'm setting it up for one thing and one thing only. Grizzly bear protection. It's just that simple. I don't know what your needs are. You know, so I, I can't say, oh yeah, run right out and buy this thing. You know, of course, safety's built right in right here, if you can see that. You know, the ambidextrous safety, amber, ambidextrous slide release right there, you know. And so, I don't know, you know. I hear tell that this rubber pad here is pretty thin, so I'll probably be getting a, I got my eye on a, like a $25 pack buyer slip-on pad, you know. And I'm really not going to do a lot. I am going to get a little case for it, but... I am just not hanging a whole lot of stuff off here. Uh, this thing is tactical enough just the way it is. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I bored you enough. This is just an unboxing. It's my first impressions of this thing. Yeah, these things, okay, today is March, March 5th of 2020. And this K, I think it was last year or sometime that this jar, these, these KS, Sevens got into full production. I think 2019 or 2018. I just know on my box, I've got a date of August. I think it's probably the manufacturer release date.
Yeah, August 14th of 2019 is what it says on that box. So, well, wish me luck with this little piece here. I I just really like the lightness of this thing. That's what that's what I'm going to enjoy. But I definitely am pretty sure I'm going to get my eye teeth rattled pretty good when I pretty well, or my dentures going to you know get vibrated right out of my head when I go to shoot this thing. But I'll, I'll crank out a few videos on that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this. This is my first impressions on this guy. I, it feels really well made. Uh, I. I wish I could tell you more, but there's so much stuff on the internet that, you know, I'm just really probably bothering more people with this, <laughs> with this doggone uh, uh, video file than I am anything. Okay. Well, that's about it. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for visiting me in my home here in Livingston, Montana. And then, boy, my screen screensaver kicked on there. <laughs> and anyway, thank you for visiting me here. And take care of yourselves, and we shall see you on down the trail. Adios, my friends.